Hey guys, Spiritual Whistleblower here with another video on narcissistic abuse. Countdown time, guys, is less than a week away. I will be in Toronto, Canada next week, Saturday, September 24th. Y'all been buying tickets. I'm super hyped. This will be my first time in Toronto. There are tickets left. We're going to be at the Dufferin Grove Comedy Theater. Dufferin Grove, y'all know where that's at. Toronto, get at me. Tickets are still available. $27, 27 Canadian dollars to get in. And I will be bringing books. I will be autographing pictures, food, that type of stuff. We're going to have a great time, okay? So Toronto, Canada, I'll see y'all next week. Let the countdown begin. Houston, Texas, to kick off to kick off the, my mind went blank for a minute, to kick off Domestic Violence Awareness Month. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month and Breast Cancer Awareness Month. On October 1st, I will be in Houston, Texas. All right. My my Texas people, y'all come through. If you're in Dallas, you're in Austin. If you're in y'all, y'all drive. It's only a three-hour drive. San Antonio, y'all come through to Houston. We're gonna have a great time. Okay, I'm already uh, putting out the location. Those who have bought their tickets, you should have the location at this point. Y'all, there's tickets left. Get at me, okay? So I want to talk about um, how an empath, we're going to talk about narcissistic friends because y'all really like when I go into this and, and um, you know, I've been going through my own things and I don't mind using my, you know, being transparent and tying my stuff with, you know, teach, you know the teachings that I, I provide for you guys because it's all relatable. And I, again, like I said, I love to be transparent, I love to be transparent and I think transparency shows that, um, you know, narcissistic people hide their shit. And for these, you know, for those of you that survived this type of abuse, you, you don't, you don't trust anybody rightfully. So if you've been abused into the ground by family, friends, lovers, you, who can you trust? So when you get on a platform like this one, you have to build people's trust and one thing you cannot say about spiritual whistleblower is that she's never transparent and she's inconsistent. I am I am the most consistent motherfucker on this platform. Nobody could ever come for me. Nobody could ever say shit about me because when I say something, I mean it. And if I tell you I'm going to be somewhere, I'm going to do something, if I'm a, I, it's done. Nobody could ever, and I keep receipts. Nobody could ever catch me slipping, ever. I, if I do a seminar and I say I'm going to be at such and such place, I'm there. So, you know, the enemy is mad that I'm out here helping y'all because the, the attacks, there's stuff that I don't even tell y'all that I go through on a daily behind closed doors. I've been robbed this summer by motherfuckers pretending to be empaths. I've been lied on. I've been, you know, they, they're, they're full of tricks. You know, they pretend to be empaths just to get close to me because they, they oh, I want to meet spiritual whistleblower. But there's a sick envy about me with these these mutants. I call them mutants. They, You're not an empath. You're pretending to be an empath because you want to get close to me because you're envious and you want to destroy me because I'm helping people. That's some sick shit. You know how sick you got to be to fake being an empath? You're faking, you know, pretending to be spiritual. You're pretending to be a man or woman of God just to get close to me. You're pretending to care about domestic violence issues. You're ca you're a fraud. And I, I deal with these people all the time fucking with me behind closed doors. So I want to teach y'all, you know, how to deal with cutting off a narcissistic friend. Because a lot of people don't know how to approach these situations when they happen. And, you know... I'm here to uh, teach you this. There is a difference. You know, it, when people get cut off, whether you cut off somebody or somebody cuts off you, and I'm talking about friendships, you can find out a lot about a person by telling them no. When you cut them off or you tell them no, or you set a boundary, you're going to find out who they really are. Because Toxic personalities, people with narcissistic personalities, they don't handle rejection very well. They don't handle um, when they've hurt somebody, whether it's intentional or not. They don't know how to approach the situation from a mature standpoint because they're going to go into victim mode. It's all about them. Me, me, me. How dare you abandon me? How dare you accuse me of something that I didn't do? How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? They're, they're not going to approach the situation from, from, from an accountable standpoint. See, empaths, whether we, let's just say you hurt a friend, you do something to hurt somebody. 
it wasn't your intention to hurt them. You might have done something unknowingly. And this person, your friend, brings it to your attention. An empath is going to react and respond totally different than a toxic, narcissistic individual. An empath is going to be like, look, I don't know what I did, but I know I did something. And what, whatever I did, whether I feel, whether I feel if I'm wrong or right, all I care about is that you and I get to a really good place again. I love you. Um, it hurts me to see that I've hurt you. You're my friend. I love and respect you. And nothing would mean more to me than to get back on track. So whatever I did, I'm going to be 100% accountable. And I'm going to give you the time and space to process things. And when you're feeling better, if you're up to it, I will be here waiting. And I, all I, all that I care about is our friendship. This is not about ego or pride. All that goes out the window when it I don't play with my friends. I, I will, I will listen. I am overprotective. I don't, I won't let anyone hurt my friends, bully my friends, um, disrespect my friends, even if it's me. So if I have to self-check and self-correct, I'm going to let my friend know immediately I am willing to be 100% accountable, okay? And whether I feel I'm right or wrong, that's irrelevant. Right now, this friendship is everything to me. I value it, I honor it, and I respect it. So when you're ready to talk about things, I will be here. I'll give you time and space. I'm not going to be pushy. I'm not going to be aggressive. And, you know, definitely not going to be defensive or, or play victim. All I want to do is love you back and get us back to where we was. That's all I care about. That's how an empath approaches a situation. When they know they've hurt somebody, whether they intended to or not, they're always going to approach the situation from, from you know, accountability. I don't know what I did, but I, my God, I can't stand to see my friend hurting. I, I can't eat or sleep knowing I played a part in hurting my friends. That's how empaths react. Not the narcissist. No, baby. A toxic manipulator will not respond the same way. They're not going to respond from a place of accountability. This is how they're going to respond. Victim, victim mindset. What did I do? See, you know what? I think you're trying to set me up. I feel, I feel a type of way. I feel, I feel used. I feel violated. You know, I don't know what I did, but I'm not going to apologize until I know what I did. And you know, how dare you come for me this way? And, and you know, I've, I've did this. They're going to start throwing everything in your face that they ever did for you. They're going to go into victim mindset. It's all about them. You've triggered their abandonment issues. So automatically the projection begins. The gaslighting begins. The woe is me. Oh my God, I'm such a victim. That They're going to turn all of that up. So there is a difference. If you're an empath, you're going to hurt because you know that you played a part in hurting your friend and you want, you want to fix it. You don't want to be on bad terms with your friend. You're not going to be wondering whether you're right or wrong. You're going to wonder what you did to hurt your friend, but you definitely, you're going to be like, I don't give a fuck if, if, if I'm right or wrong. I just want to get back right with my friend. But a narcissist is like, fuck you. I didn't do it. You know, it, you know, I can't apologize to you when I don't know what the fuck I did. And how dare you? Um, I feel violated. I feel like you the one that did this. They're going to go into this victim mindset. So the way that you handle these situations, when you when you feel that your friend is a narcissist and you're starting to pick up this pattern of behavior, how do you know? Well, look back at your last relationship. How did your ex make you feel? You were constantly walking on eggshells. You were triggered. There were things that they were doing, the gaslighting and the projection and the mind games and the manip manipulation. When you get around a narcissistic friend, he's going, he or she, they're going to ignite those same uneasy feelings. Your intuition is going to start going off when you're around a toxic friend. Now, they're going to be on their best behavior. They're, they're going to be the best friends you've ever met. They're always, in the beginning, everything's always good. But the thing about a narcissistic friend, when they feel that they're comfortable and they're secure, they get real arrogant. 
oh, she ain't going nowhere now. I'm good. I'm in there now. Then the mask, their real behavior, their real character will start to show through. If you're paying attention, you will catch them in the most quiet, covert moments, switching up their behavior. Acting one way in front of a group and switching up and treating you differently when nobody's looking. That's the real, that's, that's who they really are. Their character is who they are when nobody's looking. And they will reveal that. Give them some time. It may take three months. It may take six months. It might take a year. But they will slip up. One thing that a narcissist cannot be is consistent with their character or behavior. You will catch them, I promise. So what do you do? Here's my advice. Do not gossip about this person to the rest of your friends. Even though they're doing this low down shit to you, they're gaslighting and doing evil, hateful shit and nobody can see it because they, they've wooed your friends. They, they have, your friends might love this friend. So you exposing them, your friends are gonna be doubtful. They're gonna be like, wow, I would never think of this. I would never think so-and-so would behave. They're not gonna believe you. So you're better off keeping it to yourself and let you, you allow time to expose this narcissistic friend because I guarantee you they're going to, they're, that behavior is going to come out. I'm telling you, you just give it some time. I know it's frustrating. I know you want to say something so bad, but if you're watching a pattern of behavior unfold over several months and your intuition is bothering you and you can't unsee it, this person is a narcissist. You know what a narc is because you've been through this abuse before. And when you see it, you can't unsee it. So you're not crazy and you're going to have to trust your intuition because your intuition is going to bug the fuck out of you for a long time until this narcissistic friend exposes him, himself or herself. Don't gossip about them. What you do is you cut them off. And the rest of the friends, the rest of your friends are going to come to you and they're going to be like, oh my God, what happened? Why did you cut them off? And you say, you know what? I don't want to talk bad about him. I don't want to put him down. And I definitely don't want to come in between y'all relationship or friendship. I want you to continue hanging with this person. I want you to continue, um, you know, go on vacations, hang out, do, you know, invite y'all, whatever y'all do. I just, it's none of my business. Y'all hang out together. Just keep me out of it. I don't want to be around this person. Set a clean boundary and you tell your friends, I I'm not going to speak ill of this person. I actually want you to continue being friends because what happens is now that you've blocked this toxic friend and you've removed yourself, you have fucked up this person's game plan. This narcissistic friend is using every one of his friends. He's playing them against each other. So you play a specific role to your narcissistic friend and he's using you as a crutch and a tool to play. He's playing you against all the other people in the group of friends. So what happens when you remove yourself and you block that narcissist and you move the fuck on, you force him. He has to go back to the drawing board and come up with a brand new game plan to manipulate the rest of the friends. He has to find a new scapegoat because he was using you as a scapegoat. Now he can't use you no more. He has to pick an another person in the group as a scapegoat. So what happens, he's going to start raging and, and, and acting out of character. And then your friends are going to be like, wait, 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 wait. Where did this behavior come from? He's exposing his character to your friends now that you've removed yourself. Checkmate. Checkmate. Let time do its job. Keep your mouth closed. Remove yourself. Because all your actions will speak louder than words. The narcissist will know that you're on to them the moment you remove yourself and block them. That's why they're raging. That's why they're talking shit and spreading rumors and smear campaigning you. Then you put them in a position where they, they if they attack you, they know you're going to tell the rest of the friends and they don't want that. So you put them in a tight spot and you put them in a tight corner. Trust me on this one. It works perfectly. Remove yourself, block them, and they will expose their real character. Everything they've been doing to you is going to come out in the end when you block them. They're going to expose that behavior to the rest of your friends. And then your friends will see it for themselves instead of blaming you and saying you're bitter. You're trying to drive a wedge and break up our friendship. No, I want you to stay friends with the narcissist. I just don't want to. Then the narc will expose himself, his behavior. He'll, he'll expose himself to the rest of the friends. You just got to give it time. Then your friends will be able to make a decision. Okay, now I see why she cut you off. We see it for ourselves. 
thank me later, y'all. I just gave y'all some excellent game. And on that note, I got to go Toronto, Canada next week, Saturday, September 24th, and Houston, Texas, Saturday, October 1st. Get y'all tickets. The email is down below in the comment section. I love y'all. Take care.